So what do you say about the brand, the, the perception of the brand? Like, for example, if you want to buy iPhone, the price is the same wherever you go. So you don't really see Apple changing the price of their iPhone or Apple Watch or whatever, uh, yep. you know, depending on what's going on. Yeah. What do you say to that perception aspect of it? Yeah, I think that uh, a couple of things. Every brand thinks that they're Apple and they're not, right? Apple is a premium brand that essentially, you know, you're talking about private label brands versus Apple. You can't even compare the two. It's apples and oranges, get the pun. Uh, <laughs> so um, it, they're not, private label brands are not, right? And you have to take ego out of the equation. You have to think about what is the most optimal decision. When people are going to Amazon, they're aware that it's a marketplace. They're going to Amazon. They understand that the price changes over time. And so there is a lot of opportunity to capitalize on uh, mispricing and billions of dollars are being left on the table on Amazon. And that's really why prophecy exists. Yeah. To capture that, right? To capture that differential. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, of course. Everybody, you know, when, first of all, I, I heard this saying a long time ago, you can never be a, a successful politician and not be a narcissist because only a narcissist can actually endure that beating of, you know, who you are and then blah, blah. So entrepreneurs are the same. Entrepreneurs have a vision, right? So uh, you, you, you pursue a vision and you have a certain uh, level of pride about your vision and your knowledge and everything else. Uh, understanding that not everybody is Apple, but how do you feel about, you know, being perceived as, oh, this little brand, they keep changing their price and they're trying to game the system and they're trying to get, I mean, I mean they're not going to mistake you for Apple, uh, but at the same time, the kind of perception that you may build, uh, what, what do you think about that? Well, first of all, I love the fact that you're straw matting pricing. It's interesting. And I think that brands or consumers don't aren't aware of what's happening in the market. It's not like they go buy something, they check back 10 seconds later to see what happens to price. And we're not making a ton of price change. We just do one price change a day right now. Sometimes two, for example, if there's a storm coming, we have the largest umbrella company on, on Amazon. And as they're starting to see demand pick up, we're changing pricing to capitalize on that demand. And that's really what happens when a storm happens. And that's, that's algorithmic, algorithm, algorithmic computational thinking. And I, I understand what you're saying around perception from customers, but people just aren't aware of what's happening. And we're capitalizing on that lack of awareness. And we're doing it based on demand, based on conversion rate. We're also actually considering your competition. So when you make a price change, you have to understand how your competition reacts to those price changes. And so we're pulling your competition for a specific keyword into our model. 10 different competitors come into the model. And so we're actually baking that in when we're making our, our changes to price. Okay. 